Hello, my name is Kathleen Staten, and I work for Ars Lyrica, which is a Baroque orchestra here in Houston, Texas. Now, what do I mean when I say Baroque? Well, that was a period of time from hundreds of years ago, the 16 and 1700s, and it's just a word that helps us to understand what was happening in the art, the music, science, architecture, and all of the parts of history. Today we're going to talk about emotion in music and the science behind it. Did you know that science and music are actually closely linked? <laughs> Let's get started. So first of all, what is emotion? If I say emotion, what comes to your mind? Well, the first thing I think about are feelings. And how do we know what people are feeling? There's a lot of different ways, actually. Some of them you could tell just from watching my introduction. In fact, let's try again, and you can tell me what I'm feeling. Hello, I'm Kathleen Staten, and I'm here to talk about emotion. Hello, I'm Kathleen Staten. I'm here to talk about emotion. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kathleen Staten, and I'm here to talk about emotion. What were some of the things that changed? as I was talking to you in three different ways. You might have noticed my facial expressions. Maybe it was the tone or the sound of my voice. So my words didn't change, but the way that you heard them did. And that is the beginning of how we can understand how music can have a relationship with how we feel. Have you ever heard that if you smile, it can actually change your mood? It's true, science can tell you that. If you're having a tough day and you decide to put on a smile, it changes the chemicals inside your brain. Can you believe that? So you can actually control the chemicals in your own body simply by changing the muscles and the emotion that they cause you to feel. Try it now. What happens if you frown really hard? You feel tense and tight, and it doesn't make you feel good. But if you smile, it feels easier. And actually it does. It has a scientific relationship with everything that's happening in your body. Well, we can measure that today. You can go and put some scans together at the hospital and they can put sensors all around your body and they can tell you the data that says you feel this way or you feel that way. But 400 years ago, they didn't have that kind of technology. So how did they know what we know today about emotion, music, and our bodies? Well, it all started in ancient Greece, actually, way before the Baroque period, sort of at the beginning of really recorded history time for us. And that was when they said that there were four main humors in our bodies and that music could actually help heal you because it would charm or make those parts of your body feel different. It took a long time before people started to have any idea about how to measure these things, but coming back to the Baroque period, they did. And they wrote it all down in a document called the Doctrine of Affections. And that sounds very fancy, but what it really means is that in one place, Scientists wrote down how composers could use music to help make you feel something in particular and then how to do it. So let's take a listen to that now. I am actually a recorder player, so we're going to listen to the recorder. You may have seen one close to this, although this is bigger than the ones that you probably have seen. This is called an alto recorder, and the way it's different is that it plays in a different key and it plays lower than a smaller recorder. So I'll demonstrate for you now. <laughs> and we're going to listen to some pieces by Telemann. Telemann wrote these 12 marches, each one of them intended to make you feel a very specific emotion. So let's have a listen. And while you're listening to this first one, I want you to think about what kind of feeling do you have or what do you want to do? If you want to dance, get up and try it. If you don't feel like dancing, make note of that too.
What did you think? Did you get up? Walk around? Dance? How did that one make you feel? The word for this one is actually majesty. It was meant to feel royal. So you might have heard in it, let me put my glasses back on, you might have heard in it things that sounded like a march, like someone processing. Can you imagine walking down a big long hall to this music? You certainly wouldn't be falling asleep or feeling sad. So something that makes that music feel that way to you is the rhythm that dotted back and forth. And something else are the quarter notes, the spaces, so that you feel like you know exactly where your feet go. In fact, if you're not standing up now, why don't you try? See if you can march along in step with each step on a beat. So the beat for this piece is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Why don't you clap it with me now? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now get on your best royal feeling. You probably need to hold your chin up very high and stand up very straight and pretend that you're wearing a big heavy crown going to walk around. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. Let's try on another emotion. That was called la douceur or sweetness. Did it make you want to get up and dance or march around? Me either. Now there's a very specific reason for that. So the speed was a little bit slower. Secondly, the notes were all very close together and they moved slowly away from each other. So no jumping around. You heard what we call a lot of scale or step word movement like this. and also coming down. And it had a very soft swaying rhythm to it, almost like a lullaby. Listen again to the beginning. Now, if you are really on top of it, you might also hear that it had a very different sound to it. So our first movement was in the key of D major. And D major sounded like this. Very 
bright and very cheerful. This was in a different key. This had a different sound to it. So it sits in a different place in the recorder's voice, sort of like if you said, hi, mom, or you said, hi, mom. It's the same thing, but it has a different sound to it. It also has different fingerings, and the Baroque composers knew a lot about that. So for example, if you have to finger something that has lots of fingers picked up in between, like a fork, then that note isn't going to come out clearly. Listen. Versus this note. It just has a foggier versus a brighter sound. And the composers knew that, and they used that to help you feel emotion. I have one more for you, and I think it might be your favorite. So let's take a listen to this, and I bet you can tell just by my face what kind of emotion this might be. was called joy or rejoicing. Why do you think that that was joyful while the second piece was not? Well, a lot of that had to do with all the jumps and the skips. Listen again to the beginning. Even the music skips along and wants you to skip along with it. Also, this is back in one of those happy keys, a key that means it, where it lays on the recorder in its voice. That means where the voice of the recorder sounds it makes you feel a certain kind of emotion. So again, these ideas that scientists had 400 years ago about how music could make you feel has been proven true by science today. So it turns out that it's not just classical music that can make you feel these things. Any music can make you have an emotional response. So your homework is put on some music that you like and try and figure out how does it make you feel. And in fact, make a video and send it to us because I'd love to see what emotions you connect with music and I can tell you why. Thank you so much for visiting with us today with Ars Lyrica Houston and with me about how emotion and music are connected.